All right, welcome everybody. Thank you for tuning in to the Illegitimate Game. This podcast, we're talking about life with Jesus and how he makes your life better and how we make our lives worse trying to live without him. I'm here with my good friend Lauren, owner of Grandma's Cabinet, servant of the Lord, business owner. She loves, she lives and loves the faith, and she cooks good food, and she can pray for you and help you get set free because Jesus set her free. Welcome, Lauren. Thank you, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. We have a lot to talk about. We definitely do. And just before we started recording, you started talking about Hebrews, so now I'm hyped. <laughs> so we can get into that too. Okay. But first. Who is Lauren and what is Grandma's Cabinet? Grandma's Cabinet, it's my, pretty much just my my brainchild. Like, it started pretty much with an idea. Mm-hmm. And I just wanted to, I just, I just want to cook for people. That's pretty much all I want. But the name comes from, like, my grandma, who is, like, my idol. That's, that's my sugar foot. I love her to death. Um... In the name, like Grandma's Cabinet, it literally comes from the cabinet in her house. And I vividly remember like climbing on the counter because nobody would help me. Yeah. That's besides the point. <laughs> and I would climb on the cabinet and she had this little drawer like full of spices and all things you could imagine. And I was sitting on the couch one day talking to my cousin, trying to come up with a name for like what I want to call it. And he was like, you know, like our Grandma's Cabinet. And I was like, oh my gosh, like wow. that's what it's going to be like. Wow. That is amazing. I just I I love that, and it's it's all for her. Yeah, it's all for her. And that hit home when you said it, it, it truly there. did. Yeah, that's she like is, organic. Yeah. So every time you hear it and see it, you think about family. Mm-hmm. So what kind of stuff did your grandma cook? Like from made from scratch, like biscuits stuff. Like she that? actually didn't do a lot of scratch stuff. Oh really? Believe it or not, she would every morning cook breakfast for me and my sister, like some kind of biscuits. She would take us to Hardee's in the summer to get breakfast or lunch. She would have breakfast and lunch cooked most school days. Like we would come home, all me and my cousins, like all 10 of us would go to her house and meet up, eat, go outside, play kickball, come back in, do homework, and then everybody go home. It was just... So she didn't have that one recipe that was her secret? Sweet potato pie. Wow. She put her foot into it. Wow. Every time. And that's kind of how I got my love for cooking. Like. I would. I was always on a cabinet, on a counter or something. <laughs> I remember sitting on the counter, like helping her mix whatever she. Ooh, and potato salad. Those potato salad. two. Those are like her. It don't matter what she cooked, but those two was good. Like they were my all time. Like I just girl. What you you put something in it? <laughs> that potato salad be hit or miss. It do. Cause some yeah. people. What I notice is people either make it perfect or they make it terrible. She made her sweet. And I know it might sound weird, but Must like, not you add sugar. Good. Like, you know, Never low sugar. That. Really? Not with sugar. I'll make you some. I'll potato make. salad with sugar. Yeah. I never had that. Like spaghetti with sugar? Or watermelon and salt? Watermelon? No. No? No. Yeah. If you put sugar in my spaghetti, we're going to fight. What's up then? <laughs> <laughs> I love sugar yeah. in my spaghetti. If it's wow. tomato based, it has to have sugar. Really? That's new. I'll try it. If you do it, I'll try it. It's really good. Because I put cheese in my spaghetti. It's okay. Pray for it's me. not Pray for It's me. not better than sugar. <laughs> I put cheese in everything. I put cheese in my grits, so. In your grits? Yeah. You don't put sugar? Let's talk about grandma. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm a cheese man. I'm sorry. <sighs> okay, I guess I can finish this. Pray for I me. I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Mm-mm-mm. But sweet potato pie is always good. Mm-hmm. So, you said sweet potato pie, potato salad. What mm-hmm. else did she do that was just hers? That's pretty much it. Like, I know those were just her two things. Those were just her two things. Okay. So, so you basically just love the presence of grandma. I do. And food. Yes, yes, yes. So, what was it about her that drew you to her and climbing on the cabinet and hanging out in the kitchen? Like, something drew you like she was just she would listen when nobody else would and just always there just always like a comfort oh, let me cry oh my gosh but yeah she was just always there that's love that's love yeah but the key you said listen she listen to everything everything I'm learning that the older I get especially with my three children 
Sometimes there's a presence in having the answer and talking and solving problems, but there's also a magic to the silence. And when you listen, people present themselves, their real selves. Yeah. And I, I, I understand that, it's cool. Just thinking about her, bring the love back. Yeah. Cause there's a power in the silence and there's a power in the answer. Yeah. And the older I get and the more time I spend with my children, I see that because they're getting older now and they don't always need me to solve everything. So yeah, there's a power in the silence. There's a, yeah. there's a love in not saying anything. Yeah. Like my grandma has, um, she has Alzheimer's, so it's kind of just, like I always jokingly say like I'm her favorite grandchild, so she's not gonna forget me. Yeah. But, you know, <sighs> eventually she will. But yeah. yeah. And then we see each other again in heaven. That's true. That is true. I didn't think of all that. Yeah, it's That's definitely true. Like when I was telling you about my Hebrew teacher, he taught us that too. It doesn't end. Once you cross from death into life with Jesus, it doesn't end. Yeah. And that's why God takes his time in fixing us, because God doesn't even see time. We do. And the only reason we see time is to see his presentation, because we can't get it all at one time. Mm -hmm. And I use the word time again. But we, we can't get it all. So time is for us. God already knows. That is true. And that's what I loved about my mentor. He, he, he explained it. Like you were saying about the Hebrew language, it explains itself. That is true. It definitely does. That's really why I want to do like the word studies and everything, like Amen. to get the root of like what this all means. You know what I mean? Like I know we don't, we're not going to know everything, but I want to know as much as I possibly can. Yeah, it's just, it's so much. Just like the first letter, Aleph, mm -hmm. is Yod Yod Bob. Bob is the number of man, six. Yod Yod is ten, ten toes, ten fingers. So it was God's hand in heaven and God's hand on earth and man leaning in the middle. I didn't know that. But we're leaning in the middle. Yeah. So you can't fall because he has his hand under you. But you can't stand up straight because of our flesh. We can never be God. That's why he confused the language at Bible. So we're leaning in his hand, balanced. So you can't go anywhere. But you can't stand on your own because yeah. you're just going to become sinners again. Yeah. So we rest in his hand. And Yud is also Judah, tribe mm -hmm. of Judah, praise. So it's all him. And when you realize you're in his hand, like we were talking about a few minutes ago before we started recording, mm -hmm. we good. But we keep jumping out of his hand and we get into more problems. That is definitely true. That's where when you try to solve stuff yourself, that's when things start to really go bad. It's, it's yeah. something I've definitely learned time and time again. Yeah. You got an example you want to share that's maybe not be too personal, but the time you try to solve it? Man, I have a lot. <laughs> I know for the yeah. fact, like I was telling you about like my, like my work right now. Yeah. Um, me and my coworker, we were like best friends and now we're not. And now it's, it was just like, like what happened? And I tried to just but you did this and you did this and you did this and I've done nothing but be nice to you and while it's me it's not the love of God I'm showing it's the love of me that I'm trying to show it's just because I know I can sometimes be a people pleaser yeah. and it's just like I'm nice to be nice it's not I'm not nice for the, like from the love of God and that is me getting in my own way and I think if I really just had let God just deal with the situation or just left her alone maybe in the beginning, it wouldn't have got as far as it did. Because now it's just become like a whole thing and neither one of us talk to each other. And it's just like we work together. We got to see each other every day. Wow. It's, it's no need. Like I hate going to work and just being like, just ignoring people. <laughs> it's, it's 12 hours. That's a long time. Yeah, that is tension in the room. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, because then you want to be nice, but then it looks fake. Yes. Like, why are you talking to me now? Yes. So exactly. it's, yeah, I've had situations like that. It's, <laughs> I had one like that. The guy owed me money, and we worked in a factory. There's a lot of heavy tools and mm -hmm. hard stuff you could hit somebody with. And at the time, I wasn't saved, 
and there was times I needed that money, because you know I was young and still wild and a little bit. I just, it was days I really wanted to fight the guy. Yeah. I'm like, well, I might go to jail. <laughs> then I'm losing my job. But I want the money. But he keeps smiling at me and it feels disrespectful. Yeah. So how much, you know, how man am I? How, how masculine am I really? Am I really the super thug I wish I was? But, you know, God, God's always there. So I would just see him and just shake it off and just look at him. Then it got to the point where I would tell other people, yo, he a clown, that dude owe me money, he, you know? Because it just felt mad disrespectful, but I couldn't really do anything about it. So I literally had to just forgive it. And then it turned into him kissing up to me. Like as soon as I let it go, he started kissing up to me. Yo, what's up D, how you doing today? And I'm like, yo, why is this dude talking to me now? Why is he hugging on me? And then one day he ended up um, buying me lunch or something. But I literally just had to let it go. So later on, you know, you get saved when you read about turn the other cheek. Yeah. Let God deal with people. Their yeah. conscience is eventually going to kill them. We just have to get out of the way. That is definitely true. So how much is that? Like, do women, do y'all have that pride? Do y'all hold grudges? We definitely do. do. Y'all? So it's the same thing? We definitely do. And I, I think I'm lying to myself when I say I don't hold grudges. But yeah. like I told you, I'm very passive aggressive. And it's, it's a lot harder than it seems. Like it's, yeah, I'm nice to you right now, but then it's kind of like when you shake up a soda and then you try to open it, like everything just kind of comes out. Like it's- Explodes. Yeah. It's just so much easier to just deal with stuff in the moment than try to just let it all build up. Yeah, it's, man. I think women are worse in that way, actually. You're either super aggressive oh. Or you're very passive aggressive. There is, it's not much of an in between. Okay. Yeah, I'm working on it. God is, so, it's, it's working on me. <laughs> does that come? Well, let me ask you this way: Is that a defense mechanism? Is it being political in the workplace? Is it? Tact? I think it's like a defense mechanism. So it's not prideful. It's not anger. A little bit of anger, but mostly a defense mechanism. Defense mechanism. I think for me, especially because of like how I grew up. I just was never really hurt except for my grandma. Wow. And still, like, me and mama don't have the best relationship. Like, we still don't talk like um, you would think a mother and daughter would. It's like, okay, I can't really talk to you, so I'll just kind of just suck it all. Just suck it up. Call it a day. Just push it down. Kind of like you were saying. Like, you just push it to the back of your mind. Mm -hmm. You just don't deal with that. But as you grow and get older... It just, it just becomes worse. It took me, like, I remember being like a little kid um, in church and most of my hurt has come from church, but like being like five and it's like this 60 year old lady yelling at me and all I can do there is just stand there and take it. You know what I'm saying? And that sometimes wow. comes back to my mind. Like I'm 23, almost 24. Yeah. And within this year, God has brought me back, like t brought me back to that and kind of really delivered me from that, from just feeling like a five-year-old child again every time somebody confronts me about something. And in that way, that's how he's working on me with being like passive aggressive and just dealing with things in the moment. That's... Yeah. <laughs> this I could take that somewhere else because sometimes I think, especially for people that grew up in religion, mm -hmm. Sometimes I think the enemy could plant stuff when you're young, mm -hmm. turn your heart later, and then it comes back at the worst times. It, yeah. Because you'd be almost, yeah, you'd be almost at heaven's gate, like, yeah, Jesus, I could see you, and then some crazy, wild thought would come back, and then you experience it again. Mm -hmm. Then I'm like, well, should I blame God again? It's like, nah, that's just the enemy planting yeah. another seed. And then the way it was explained to me, it's another... I want to call it a stone, but it's another one of the things you have to conquer yeah. to get it out your heart for real. Yes. Because we're supposed to be conformed into Jesus. And if he never retaliated, we have to get to a point where we don't retaliate either. That's a lot easier said than done. Which is almost impossible. Yeah. Which is, yeah. Because it, that stuff comes back. It do. It definitely does. Yeah, it's, because I had a family member that passed away. And I was supposed to cry. I was supposed to be angry. 
I still remember this time when, it, when I found out about it. And I was like, yo, why don't I even care? And then I didn't even go to the funeral. So I'm like, yo, was that bitterness? <laughs> so I was like, God, what's wrong with me? Is there something wrong with me? Yeah. So I thought about that and prayed about it. Because we hold, like you said, we hold in that stuff. You said five years old? I'm 44, and it's stuff I remember from 30, 40 years ago. Yeah. And you think it's gone until something scratches it. Yes. Literally, yes. It's it's very triggering. That's a good word, trigger, yeah. That's why it's good to know your triggers. Yeah. It's really yeah. good to know your triggers. And then pray to be delivered from it. Cause you You definitely have to. Yeah. So when's the um do you wanna talk about your mom? Like, do you know the root of that? I know a little bit. Like as I've gotten older I've learned a lot more about my mom. Yeah. And it's things like how she grew up as well. Okay. Like, um, I know my grandma was adopted. So most so my family literally starts with my grandma. Oh wow. Um, and then her like, you know, working a lot and things like that. I know her husband was just um an alcoholic. My grandma got married when she was thirteen, like had her first kid at sixteen, like most people way back when, you know what I mean? Like Yeah, I heard them stories. Yeah, it's just it's just trauma on top of trauma on top of trauma. But one thing I know, you know, being saved, knowing God for myself, it's going to stop with me. Like, Lord willing, when I have kids one day, like, they're going to know that my love comes from the Lord. It's not from me. They're not going to have to deal with the things that I went through. Like, Amen. it's just, that's dead. It's, it's over. Mm-hmm. We're done. <laughs> it's just, it's been going on for way too long. Yeah. I remember, oh man, what was the name of that conference? Remember she hung up that banner that said it stops with me? Um, oh my gosh. The uh, Art of Unlearning Conference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It Bethany. ran in my family Bethany until Bethany. it ran into me. That's what it was. Yes. Yeah. She had the banner with the pictures. Yeah. I wish I took a picture that day. I have a bunch of, I don't I think I, I took a picture. One. I do have a couple of pictures. Yeah, that one. I do have a bunch of it pictures. It ran in my family until it ran into me. Yes. That's power. It is. That's power. Because it has to stop somewhere. Mm-hmm. And that's when we have to get to the altar and say, Lord, <laughs> how and not why, but give me a strategy to end it. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't work with our own minds and our own hands. Definitely not. That's when you just burn out. And I know for a fact, like men, especially me, I've done this several times, a problem will come and I'll give it all my might to fix it. And guess what? I do fix it. But it don't stay fixed. Yeah. It's a very really <laughs> short time. But it's, but it took me everything to heal this thing for five minutes. Yeah. And then when it comes back, I'm broken. So I can't fix it again. Mm-hmm. But if God does it, it's fixed forever. That is definitely true. That is, I've learned that in the like, what now, four years four. that I've been living for God? Like, yeah. I have learned that. And it took me three of those to really learn how to lean on God. But now that I'm here, I'm I'm here for it. Like I'm here for the long run. Yeah, cause like, <laughs> cause you ever notice, you go to a bookstore. There's a million books on self help. Mm-hmm. That means none of them work. That that actually <laughs> makes that actually makes sense. That's funny. Why are there a million books on self help? Yeah. Cause none of them work. Yeah. Everybody has a strategy that works for five minutes. Yeah. Then you have to buy another book. That's true. Then you have to go to another conference. I never thought about it like that. That is true. <laughs> Yo, that's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> I've never thought of it like that. Yeah. Dang. None of them work. That's why there's a million of them. Yeah. Then you go online, what? There's a million websites. Self-help, mm-hmm. nine steps, eight. None of them work. You give up all this energy and, you know, my wife could tell you, my older son could tell you. My two youngest, I was a little better when they mm-hmm. grew up. But I solved everything, but it never lasted. But it cost me everything. Mm-hmm. So now I'm tired, my brain's cracking. I'm sick, I'm overweight. Started drinking again, because it doesn't last. Yeah. But it works, then you feel like Superman. Yeah. But it don't last. Everything is good in the moment, until yeah. it's not. Yeah. And then you just gotta do it all over again. And it's just like a constant cycle. And that's why I am glad I know the Lord for myself because that's he's literally the only thing that has ever 
the only thing I could ever really truly stand on. Everything else is like sand. It just goes away. It just kind of blows off. Sand. Yeah. So as soon as the tide come in, right? Mm-hmm. And that's Jesus had the perfect metaphor. Until the heat comes, you know, it's like like the this old rap group, they used to call it plastic. They used to call men plastic because you're hard until the heat comes. Then you melt. That's funny. Yeah, it was a rap song back in like I think it was like 1992, 93. I wouldn't even thought about it yet. Yeah. Hey, you, you know hip hop. They the greatest creators ever. <laughs> yeah. But these call it plastic, cause you hard at first till the heat comes. Then you melt under pressure. So you never want to be a plastic man. Like that yeah. was an insult. Still is. That's still a good metaphor. Yeah. I think they was way before their time. Yeah. Rap music, man. That's, that was that was the message for a long time. And then it just got it's demonic now. I can't even listen to it no more. Oh, I hate it. With so, the passion, with my everything. Yeah, this new music is straight demonic now. Yeah. It's not even creative anymore. It's, it's just not. Everybody's angry. All my sis that's all my sister listens to. Like I know when we're in the car together, like that's either if I'm driving we listen to what I wanna listen to. If she's driving, we can listen to whatever she listens to, but it's it's just crazy. Like it's all hot girl this, city girl this, like get money take his money it's like it's crazy i don't get it i do not get it there's it's not even I'm trying to think of the right word but it's not even, there's no imagination you're getting straight to the result yeah at least we had it some of our older music back in the 90s well, i'm older than you but some of the music in the 80s and 90s some of the end result may have been the same yeah but at least there was an imagination leading up to it yeah now it's straight you can have this if you give me this Yes. If you buy me a bag, you can have that. Yeah. If you give me this, I'll buy you this. Yeah. We had an imagination. And sometimes the songs will end in marriage. Because, girl, I'm going to love you forever. Now it's, I'm going to love you now, tonight. Tomorrow, I'm going to call you friend. At least our songs, I'm going to love you forever. Whether you got married or not, the message was, I love you forever. Like, Boys and Men, one of their greatest songs, I go with you to the end of the road. Like, yeah. I'm going to love you forever. Yeah. Meet me at the, um, what's the song where it's like, meet me at the altar in your white dress. That popped in my head. Meet me at the, yeah, Drew, um, not Drew Hill. Um, I don't know who sings it, name? but I know the song. Yeah, the group from, uh, Jagged, not Jagged, the dude from Atlanta. Meet me at the altar where you're, I know what you're talking about. I just can't remember the name <laughs> yeah. of the group. I'm mad now, because I lived in Atlanta. I'm supposed to remember this. Dang, you're not representing me. <laughs> I was there for four years. Don't hate me. But yeah, it's, um, now, let's get back to the food. We uh, cause we could talk about music forever. Yeah. Cause art used to have an imagination, but once the enemy gets a hold of something, they corrupt it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, when you started the, what made you start the food thing? Were you cooking for yourself? Were you cooking with somebody else? I um. Cause I know you got the title from Grandma's Cabinet. Yeah. What made? You, like, what made me start it was um, I was at work one day. I don't remember the like the entire conversation, but my manager, I was talking to her, I was like, yeah, I just, I want to cook something. I want to like start my own business. She was like, well, you can bring, you can make this, or you can make that, and you can bring me some, I can try it, like get your sales, all that good stuff. And I was like, yeah, whatever, like you ain't going to do that. Um, and I was just like, I, I think what I want to do is I just want to do something quick, something like snackable, you know what I'm saying? Like granola, keep it kind of simple. Yeah. I went home, like that day that week something like that i was just like let me just find a recipe i can make this this sounds easy i'm, I'm famous for well that's easy i can do that sometimes it's good sometimes it's not in this case it was really good yeah and it just kind of built from there and i was like i genuinely enjoy like cooking and baking and things like that like some stuff is a lot easier than others um granola is actually very simple to make like it it don't take a lot of time but um, just gathering the ingredients. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the. That's all you part. did. Gathering the ingredients. Cause I remember you said the bagel was took a little bit of homework. Yes, the bagels, they do take a little bit longer. It depends on what you're putting in it as well. Yeah. And it's not as easy as most people think, cause you do have to like you gotta boil your bagels, you gotta bake them for a little bit. Um, the longest part is the rising part, but like the end result is actually super cool. Yeah. I also learned how to make homemade pasta. It is so easy. Really? Super easy. And I have a pasta roller. That's what I was, exactly what I was about to say. Yeah. How do you, yeah. I made it one time without a pasta roller, and I will never do it again. 
it's it's arm strength that I don't have in it now. But it's it's fun. Like the end result is amazing. Right. And you know where it's coming from. Yeah, you can call it organic if you want to. Literally, yeah. <laughs> so when you when you first started it, like who was the first customers? Your friends, your family? Like how'd it go? Um friends and family, co workers, people at church. Most of the time people at church will support you. Like they love you. So you told everybody in advance you were starting mm-hmm. your own thing? Or sometimes I would just be like, Oh hey, I made this, you want it? And they'd be like, Yeah, sure. Or I'll just text people on Instagram like that I knew, like, Hey, I made X, Y, and Z, like I made granola, I made bagels. Do you want some? What flavor do you want? Like, yeah. And they were just like, sure, why not? How much is it? And I'm just like, oh, it's just samples, you know. Yeah, you did that to me. Yeah. Because I wanted to pay you because it was good. And you was like, don't worry about it. So I was like, okay, well, uh, next time. Next time. Yeah. Yeah, I was, um, I'm making some this weekend before I go on vacation to give to um, a couple at church. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm excited. Yeah, because I always want to be a blessing. Because I've been an entrepreneur off and on, so that twenty dollars is big. Because mm-hmm. it boosts your confidence up. It definitely does. Yeah. It's like okay, if you're buying it, can I get somebody else to buy it? Can they buy it too? Like, you think? I actually had a lady in Louisiana reach out to me to buy um, granola. On Instagram. Mm-hmm. Wow. She was like, carrot cake is one of her favorite flavors, and. Yeah, she bought it. Like she just, you know, sent me the money and all the good stuff. And I was, I was so excited. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh, you really brought it from me. Like, out of everybody that you could have chose, you yeah. chose me. That's just super exciting. Yeah, that was a happy trip to the post office. Yeah, she, literally, yeah, <laughs> the best trip ever. <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, people don't. I just heard um this guy I follow online, Jordan Peterson. Mm-hmm. He did a whole video about it, and he said you would not believe how little encouragement you need to go a long way. Yeah. So he said people just need to start giving people a little bit of encouragement. Mm-hmm. It don't take much. It's just the little things. Like, oh, that was really good. I think also criticism, like constructive criticism. Don't just tell me I'm doing a bad job. Okay. But <laughs> if you, like if I made you a bagel and you're just like, hey, it's good, but add a little bit more salt. Like, I got you. Let me take that recipe and just tweak it a little bit and make it better. Yeah. And now give it to a bigger audience. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody might like it now. Yeah. that little, Yeah, you're right. You're right. Mm-hmm. You're right. That, that's the curse of telling the, um, what you call it, the white lie? Yeah. A white lie could cause more harm. Definitely. But yeah. if I just said add salt. You... Just let me know. That's all I ask. Yeah. Because I would hate to, like, keep doing the same thing over and over, and it's just terrible. And I'm just sitting here wondering why nobody's, like, buying it or nobody likes it or something like that. Mm-hmm. And in the beginning, you could have just been like, hey, add, slow, add a little salt, add a little sugar, add whatever. Like, Yeah. Wow, so that goes back to having the right people around you. Mm-hmm. That is definitely what you need. So how do need. you know who's a good friend? I know we changed the subject again, but no, how do you know fine. who's a good friend? I'm trying to figure that out too, but um, <laughs> you still learning. <laughs> I would say definitely <laughs> pray about it. Yeah. Like I, I, I pray for my friends. I really, really do. Um, but just pray and ask God to lead you to the right people, mm-hmm. and just look out for red flags as well. I can be very naive sometimes, yeah. and I'm like, okay. I mean, I know you, you may have hurt me, but I'm gonna give you another chance. It's okay, like, or I'll just kind of look past it, because you know, like, I still love you. Know you, like, I'm, I'm a child of God. You know, what would Jesus do? But I think sometimes you also kind of just gotta let people go. You know, you can't hold on forever, because it hurts more holding on than letting go. Wow, true. But yeah, like. True. Finding the right people, it's its hard. I think it's like a trial and error thing. Because I know most of the people, I could probably count two worldly friends that I still talk to. And it's not even like on a regular basis. We talk very rarely. Yeah. But when we talk, it's always a good conversation. But one friend, every time we talk, she always asks me to pray for her at the end of the conversation. Wow. Yeah. I'm just like, oh my gosh. Uh, you want to come to church? <laughs> Yeah, so she knows you the light. Yeah. She calls me every time she sees me. She's just like, I'm, you're just like my most holy friend. Like, every time <laughs> I see you, you just look like a Christian. And I'm just like, thank you. Like, I try. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, when, when other people notice without you selling it, mm-hmm. that does give you some mm-hmm. energy at the time. 
Yeah, that happened to me earlier this week. One of the security guards at the building, he said something good to me. And he said it at the right moment. Yeah. Because my mind was in a yeah. different place, thinking about stuff that stressed me out. Then he said something good, and I was hyped for the rest of the day. You can. Like, you really be riding on that cloud all day. Yeah. And it's just, oh, you said you like my hair. Or you said I look like a Christian. It's just like, oh, like, you see it. Like, you just, it, it gives you hope. It gives you, it's like that light. Like, they see the light. It's, man, it's I can just think about it all day. It's real, like, like this, um, the sowing the seeds, and you send it out in the world, and mm-hmm. it comes back. Because me and my daughter was at a restaurant a couple weeks ago, and a friend of mine from the barber shop, he used to cut hair. I hadn't seen his brother at least 10 years, probably. He walked up to the table. He said, yo, yo, you may not remember me, but yo, I remember you, da 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 and I looked at him, and I said, yo, son, from the barbershop. He said, yeah, so we, you know, we dapped up, we hugged, and he, he started reminding me of stuff I said, because he remembered I was a minister back then, because I was doing prison ministry yeah. back then. And he, maybe, he remembered all that, and I was just like, wow. Then he was complimenting me in front of my daughter, so I felt even better. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, that's real, because so, the light comes back. Yeah. So, I, like I said, I felt good, and this was 10 years ago. Yeah. And you remember something positive. So all those seeds come back. Mm-hmm. And it reminds you, God got you. That's like when I'm at work. Um, and it's, I, so I never knew what a Pentecostal was until I came to the church. Yeah. But I'll be at work. Like I wear a jean skirt to church. Um, I had a couple of people ask me like, hey, are you Pentecostal? Or later on, when they are like leaving or something they'll just come up to me and they'll just say hey i know that you have on a jean skirt like are you a pentecostal and i'll be like yeah and one girl was like i knew that was old school holiness and i was just like (laughs) okay (laughs) but like or simply are you a christian i just i just knew it like you just have this light about you and every time somebody says that it just it just warms my heart like it just does and i'm like thank you for seeing it you know what i'm saying like like you said without me speaking on it Cause I try, and some days it's a lot easier. It's so easier than others. True. Cause sometimes people just be trying you, but you know people be people and people. <laughs> like man, but yeah, it's nice. It but just, that weight on you it just make you stronger. So. Mm-hmm. Cause this, I remember at a time I was embarrassed by that. Because it's, in my mind, I'm thinking if everybody knows I'm the Christian. They're going to try to take advantage of me. Mm-hmm. And then some people just get turned off from it because of past experiences. Mm-hmm. Like, I went through the same thing in my early 20s. Because I would... <laughs> yeah, I can say it now. I would try Christians on purpose. Because I remember I used to be one. And I still had a grudge with God and myself. So I would be that person to antagonize people and say, are you really real? Then if they really were, I would attack their Bible knowledge. And I would come with all kinds of... St- abstract esoteric stuff just to see where they're at so when I got saved I was like you know what I wanted to live it but not sell it so that way if somebody does try me or approach me I know it's genuine or it might be really spiritual or they might really have a real question yeah because when I did try to sell it it was instant rejection yes yes so I had to learn tiptoe that line yeah because you don't want to sell it I used to do that but <laughs> when I first got saved. Push it on everybody. Man, you couldn't tell me nothing. <laughs> you going to hell. You going, you going to, hell. to hell. You going to hell. Everybody was going to hell. <laughs> everybody but me. Literally, yes. Yeah. And don't let you be in another denomination. It was over. Like, <laughs> I have a friend. She's Lutheran. She's gay. And she's a pastor. And I was like, oh, man. man. <laughs> How? How? <laughs> right now, she's in... um. Minnesota in seminary school and we don't talk a lot anymore but we yeah. used to talk all the time and we it would I'm, we used to get into debates I'm gonna just say it like it was I was like no because if you read this scripture it says this not that mm-hmm. you're wrong and she'll be like I'm not saying you're wrong but you're not right either and it was we, we could go on all day yeah. but God really really had to humble me <laughs> and was like look no like when I tell you he snatched me up by my edges and was like get yourself together you, this is how you turn people away and it's yeah it definitely is because I wouldn't want somebody coming to me telling me everything that I know is wrong everything that I grew up believing is wrong and 
I think for me, that's also partly why, like, I've really had to find God for myself. Because, like, growing up in church, like, you, you know, you're taught a lot of things. But I remember asking questions. It was very, like, frowned upon, especially in, like, Baptist churches. No hate to them, but they don't like you to ask questions. It's just, like, you're being disrespectful. And I ain't never seen nothing like it. It's just crazy. And for me, like, I turned away from the church, turned away from God, just turned away from everything. And I vividly remember saying, okay, when I'm old enough, when I do this, when I'm 18, for instance, I'm never going back to church. Yeah. 19, I'm right back in church, but a different church. Mm -hmm. But I remember walking into the church like four years ago now. And I just felt like an instant weight lift. And I've never felt anything like it, like anywhere else at any other church. Um, that means you're in the right place. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And earlier when I was thinking about this, like I was just taking my notes and everything. And I was like, the scripture, Matthew eleven twenty eight through 30 came to my mind where it talks about like, you know, um, my God is like, yo, my, my yoke is light. And it just, it really hit me. You know what I mean? Like, you can read stuff 10,000 times, but until you, until God gives you the revelation of something, it like, I was like, oh my gosh. (laughs) You really like, that's crazy. It just, it literally blew my mind. I was like, Lord, thank you. Like, oh my gosh, you, my, you want all this for that? You want all of like my shame and guilt and all this to, for salvation like that's crazy yeah. and the greatest word you said was my it ain't the church's yoke it yeah. ain't the religious yoke yes. it ain't your family's yoke yes it's not what you believe yoke yeah. it's his yeah right back in his hand yeah. which is the first hebrew letter that is true because <laughs> it's him that- I'm like how we got back to that. I love this is how we study it. <laughs> it's him. Man. Yeah. Like that's and that's what my mentor used to tell everybody. Yeah. It's him. We add all this stuff to it, mm-hmm. but it's you and Jesus. Nothing else matters. Yeah. And then it spreads from there. But if you start anywhere else, you're dealing with somebody else's yoke and somebody else's doctrines, mm-hmm. beliefs. It's Jesus himself. Yeah. We have to know him. Yeah. It's not about religion. And now you're free. Right. And then when you're with him, he'll tell you where to go yeah, and what to do. And then, like you talking about the Lutherans and all, how we judge people. I'll give you one quick example, and then I'm going to tell you a story. This Catholic guy heard this testimony. He went to Catholic church, but he got filled with the Holy Spirit and really got saved because mm-hmm. he wanted the truth. He stayed in the Catholic church and started converting other people. Oh, wow. He didn't leave. Yeah. God put him on an assignment. So he's still going to Catholic churches, but he's saving people that want to be delivered from there. But if we met him in the street, or if you just saw him, you tell him he was going to hell. Yeah. You need to leave there. No, that's his yeah. assignment. Yeah. So wherever Jesus tells you to go, that's your assignment, and nobody can tell you you're wrong. That's good. That's good. But we're so quick to judge and yeah. critique and pull, and only these people are saved, and only yeah. these. That's not your job. Yeah. Yeah. It's you and Jesus, and that's it. So <laughs> if he tells you to go work at a daycare and cook bagels he wants you there and whatever's going on at that daycare is yeah. your job yeah he tells you to go to microsoft and get into tech that's your job like whatever he tells you to do mm-hmm. for a season i was a football coach with my kids and god wanted me to work with kids and my own kids at the same time mm-hmm. at that moment that was my job so me and my wife had to make a sacrifice because i didn't make a lot of money at the time either but i felt that was what i was supposed to be doing and it turned out to be a good thing because i ended up mentoring a lot of young men yeah and spending time with my own kids, which is family time, which is always precious. That is true. So my boy stayed out of trouble. So, and that, and I love the fact that I met my teacher at that time because yeah. the way my brain goes, I'd be gone. Yeah. I'd be having imaginations. I'd be doing. I'd be everywhere. But he kept saying it over and over again until it finally sunk in. Derek, it's you and Jesus, nothing else. And if you want to know who Jesus is, read the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> That's the way to get to him, most definitely. And if you d- don't know something, shut up and pray. Yeah. Stop running to all these people. Stop going to all these conferences. Yes. Stop confusing yourself. Yeah. You say, Dad, it's just you and Jesus. Relax. I know you Malcolm X. I know you want to save the world. 
But start with yourself and your kids. Yeah. Start with your wife. It's you and Jesus. Do that. And I'm like, but what about, but what about? He's like, yo, you can't save them anyway. You can't even save yourself. That's, I literally was, <laughs> yo, I had to learn that. I learned that <laughs> recently. Because I know, yeah. like, you're attracted to what you are. Amen. And I don't think I've ever been whole. I've always felt like something was missing. Like I was broken in some way, shape, or form. Amen. And when I tell you I would always attract broken people, I'm like, hey, let me fix you. And God's like, okay, but you missing this, and you don't got that, <laughs> and your head ain't screwed on right. What you going to do? Like, how are you going to pour into somebody else? Like, what are you giving them? What? Tell me. What you what you giving them? You're just giving, like, all your trauma. Like, you can kind of try to talk them through things, but it's yeah. it's not. You're not going to get nowhere with it. It's you have to be whole. And that wholeness, that completeness comes from the Lord. Amen. Man. And that's and now we think we love each other, but yeah. they call that a trauma bond. Mm -hmm. We're just sharing yes. the same pain, but we're both still in pain. Yes. And now we find somebody else in pain and bring them in and pretend we're healed. Mm -hmm. So now all three of us are drinking wine and going to the club, mm -hmm. listening to loud music to feel good. Yeah. But then when we leave the club, we're still sick the next day. Man, that was all of my college life. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of a lot of us been there. Yeah, men do the same thing. You know, you can just trade the wine for Hennessy, but it's the same thing. I love you, bro, because we're still broke. Yeah, but what happens as soon as one of them gets saved or one of them gets married? Now we hate him because he's doing better than us. Instead of all of us healing. Yeah. And the fact that you get jealous of somebody just means you ain't delivered. Why can't we all win? Like that was one of the that was the sermon I was um that the pastor talked about on Sunday. Mm -hmm. I um, went with my friend to DC. We went to Capital Community Church and he was literally talking about, you know, I win, you lose, or you lose, I win. But in the end, it should be, you know, we both thrive and it's for the kingdom Amen. instead of, you know, like vice versa. Like, it's not about us. That's, that's number one. It's not about us. It's about the Lord. It's, you know, seeing everybody in heaven one day. Man. And like you said, there's something else that's him pulling us up. And if we're going in the same direction, we all win because we're going there. But as long as it's me and you, mm -hmm. I got your answer and you're the follower, it's always going to be lopsided somewhere. Yeah. And then if you get delivered first, now I'm mad. Like, yo, why'd you get delivered? Oh, I went yeah. to such and such a church. Or oh, I met this person, now I'm jealous because it was about me. But when we're both looking at Jesus, we're both happy. Mm -hmm. And if you get blessed, I know I'm getting blessed tomorrow because mm -hmm. he did it. That's true. So now I'm not, there's no envy anymore because like I'm not the idol and you're not the idol. Yeah. He's the idol. And I know we use that, don't want to use that word, but Jesus is the idol. He's God. Yes, he should. But that's a, <laughs> that word has a negative connotation. Yeah. But if we're going to idolize something. Let it be Jesus. Let it be Jesus. Don't let it be anything of this world. Because kind of like going back to what we said earlier, it'll just be that constant circle of, well, yeah, this is great. And this is, it's great in the moment until it's not. Until it's not. And then you got to find something else. Yeah. And then again, find something else. And then you're sad again. And you find something else. And it's just, man. I've done that on YouTube. I'll find a hot preacher and I'll listen to all his <laughs> sermons for six months. Then I'll hear something else. Oh, this is dope. This is dope. All that is in the Bible anyway. Yeah. So just stay in the Bible first, and then this is just a supplement. Because none of them, well, I don't want to say it that way, but <laughs> <laughs> all of them, I'm going to say it this way, all of them are good at something. Yeah. Because they're all speaking from their experience. Yeah. So one might be a good motivator, one might be a good teacher, one might be a good educator. Yeah. One might speak great messages for men. Like T.D. Jakes, he knows how to motivate men. Yeah. Everybody's gifted somewhere. Yeah. And then there's these speakers who could motivate women really good. But everybody's good at something, but nothing's better than the Bible. That is true. So this is just a supplement now. And, you know, we need that. Because life is complicated. And if I'm going to be on YouTube, I'm going to listen to somebody talk about God instead yeah. of the other stuff. Yeah. Every now and then I do listen to, you know, the self-help stuff sometimes. But like I said, when it's the supplement... I'm not missing anything. That's true. It's just making you more real-rounded.
But without the Bible, they become the idol. Definitely. And now I need you. And that's a problem because now you find fault in people. Because I went through that stage, too, where everybody was trash. Yeah. But that's because I kept putting them on the pedestal they didn't belong on. Yeah. That's not fair. Going off of that, my um, mentor was actually telling me don't let other people put you on a pedestal. Because mm-hmm. as soon as you do something that they don't like, they'll kick it from under you. And I True. ain't heard nothing truer than that. True. Because I had a friend, like, she was just, um, she's just, she was like, oh my gosh, you're just so holier than thou like and because i was telling her like everything that i've been through and i'm grateful that i don't look like the hell that i've been through but that phrase to me it's like a and i know she didn't mean it as an insult or nothing like that but that phrase it's it's just used by people who aren't safe and they're just like oh you just think you're better than me you know like that's always how it is um so I just thought I was like, bro, don't, don't, please don't say that. Like, I know you didn't mean nothing by it, but anything else, like, just say you look like, like you look nice. That's cool too. <laughs> I was just like, or simply say you don't look like the hell that you've been through. Just, I, man, I've been through a lot of life in a very short amount of time. It's been rough. Yeah. Little, yeah. And like, <laughs> it's. I don't want to say it's not, well, it's not fair at all. Fair is a myth. We have to create our own fair. Mm-hmm. But when you know the truth behind it, you can overcome it and then just accept it and then pray other people don't go through it. Because I'm really good at pulling other people out the fire now. Yeah. I can see it a mile away now. Yeah. And that's what I loved about coaching youth league football with the kids. Because I could almost tell you what that is. Which one's gonna be a gangster? Mm-hmm. Which one's gonna chase the girls? Which one hates his mama? Which one hates his daddy? Mm-hmm. Just coaching football, I could, I could almost see it. Unfortunately, which one's going to jail? You could almost see it. So I wanted to be a positive mentor to them and talk to them and a few of them I used to bring to church and stuff like that. So all the stuff we go through, now we're equipped to help others. Everything we go through, it's, it's not for us. It's for somebody else. That's a good one too. Your testimony, it's it's like the test. Yeah. And then you're giving the answers to somebody else. So they can give the answers to somebody else. Yeah. It's man, it's like you said, life ain't fair. It's it's not fair <laughs> no. when you're going through it. But no. when you come out on the other side, when God delivers you from whatever it may be, and then you somebody new comes into church and you can tell them and you can show them. Like, hey, I can, and you can see when somebody's going through something. You can see it. When you can see it and you can help them through it and you can help them overcome it, like it is like, and it's not the glory for you. It's not, the, it's not glory for me. It's glory be to God. It's like, God brought me through this. I didn't get through this. Cause if it was me on my own, I'd still be in it. Yeah, that, like, that yeah, man, that. I would still be struggling. And it's so ill because sometimes you don't even know you're in it. Mm-hmm. Like and I was telling you about bitterness earlier. Mm-hmm. You don't even know. Like, that fish don't know the water wet. That's all he knows. And he, all he knows is if I come out this water, I'm going to die. Yeah. Even if it's dirty. Yeah. But if I stay in this dirty water, I can breathe. Yeah. If I come out this dirty water, I'm going to die. So we as humans, we get adjusted to that. But then it becomes the new normal. Because I, my first experience with this was in high school. I had been around a bunch of, well, not to use the word toxic, but wild women. Then I met this real smart, quiet girl who she was talking about going to a debutante ball. And I'm like, debutante ball? That ain't gangster. Yeah. Like, ain't nobody from Wu Tang gonna be at a debutante yeah. ball. And she was like, I want you to come, I'm gonna get you this suit and this tuxedo. And I'm like, oh, tuxedo. That means I gotta comb my hair. And I literally was like, no, I don't wanna go. Then I told a friend of mine about it. He was like, debutante ball, you can't go up there. Who you think you is? Because I had a bunch, you know ghetto friends so I told my man the one who introduced me to I was like yo I ain't going to that he got mad at me so maybe about a week or two later he kept me hooked up he was like yo Derek you've been hanging around them hard headed girls for so long when you met a good one you ain't want it and I was like what and I, bl- I completely blew it off cause I wasn't trying to hear it. you know I was 17 I, was, I didn't care about nothing anyway Yeah. but for about a week later I thought about it again another week went by I'm like maybe he's right Cause then I started judging the girls I was talking to, and they were all trash. Mm-hmm. 
but it was exciting. It was fun. There was no commitment. There was no expectations. I ain't had to do nothing. Mm -hmm. But with her, debutante ball, and she was asking me about college, and I'm like, college? I gotta, I ain't even doing my homework now. So she had standards, expectations, all kind of stuff. And I wasn't ready for that. Because I was so used to the trash. Yeah. Because there's no expectation. So it's the same thing, you know, we, like you talking about the stuff we go through, sometimes God's trying to grow us. He's trying to expose your own mess. <clears throat> but then when you get used to it, you don't want to leave. It, then you develop an identity there. Because mm -hmm. if I went to the debutante ball, I'd have been out of place. Not realizing it's time to grow up. Yeah. So it's, I mean, do women, do y'all do the same thing? Are y'all afraid to grow sometimes? We definitely are. I know for me, um, kind of like I was saying, I was very attracted to like broken people, mm -hmm. people like me. When I was um, 17, I met this boy and we were together for like two and a Hold half Hold on, I met this boy. Yeah. <laughs> it's... <laughs> And man, it was like oh, we were man. two and a half years. I ain't gonna say the worst. <laughs> I met this boy. Okay. It was. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it was pretty. Um, that was a different reaction than when you talk about grandma. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Your memory went somewhere else. Man. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, it was like the. Yeah. Most hard. I ain't gonna say the most hard, but it was it was real difficult. Like <laughs> two and a half years. All right. And like during that time I literally put everything to the side because I'm just like oh I love you like I can fix you you know what I mean like mm -hmm. we can grow together that's not what he was thinking I don't know what he was thinking We he just you know, he never tell me still don't know it's like four or five years later something like that four years later dang but um yeah like we just we would go through so much like we would kind of like I was saying earlier we would break up get back together break up to get back together and i was always the one just I was like i oh, know like i got you it's cool we can work it out you know when there was one time i was real dumb at 17 to 19. yeah i um uh, yeah i think we all were <laughs> i brought this man a watch like it was a couple hundred dollars and I was like, you know, I can buy you this. Like, yeah, we can stay together, whatever. And I was just like, I was thinking about that today. And I was like, yo, I needed that money. Like, I had tuition to pay. I needed, I needed a car. I didn't even have my license yet. I was like, what was wrong with me? Like, you just get so blinded by you think you want this or this is all it is. And it's, in reality, it's, it's you not knowing your worth. Um... It's you not knowing that you should be treated better. And that is something that God has really shown me these, this past year is teaching me what I'm worth. Teaching me that I am a daughter of the King, like a daughter of the Most High. And I deserve way more than he had to offer. Yeah. Way more than anybody on the street could offer. Um, And I'm like, when I start to want to settle when I'm starting to be like, oh, you know, like, I'm never gonna get married. Like, I'm 23, almost 24. Um, Cause I know there's people younger than me who are married. They've been married since they were 18. Yeah. And it's like, dang, when it's gonna be my turn? You know what I mean? And you, you start to think about those things. You start to think about like, hey, you know, I'm getting old. I'm almost 30. It's like, life is just about to be done. I'm just old as Methuselah. It's just, it's crazy. And I have to stop and be, like literally tell myself, get get yourself together. It's not the end of the world. You're not almost 30. You have like a whole six more years left. You'll be okay. You're a lot of living. Like you have a lot of life to live. You will find your person. When you are the person that God wants you to be, then he, he will bring you that person. You know what I mean? Like, and I say this for everybody. Like it's something that everybody can learn. I know there's a lot of, sometimes like a lot of older women you're in your 40s, 50s, whatever, and you probably got kids. And it's like, okay, so when am I going to get married? And I can see how that could also be a little bit hard because I don't have kids yet, but it's like, it's hard, you know? Still waiting. And it's that, that waiting game. Like, you're literally in the waiting room of life. And it's like, God, do you hear me? Do you see me? What's going on? 
am I just, I just feel like you're just toying with me at this point. And I think when you get to that point, when you start to get weary and you start to get restless, that's when you really need to lean into God. Um, and I've really, God has really been dealing with me that with that recently. It's just leaning on him and really being like, okay, God, I'm going to give you my all. I'm going to focus on you. I'm not going to be out here trying to talk to some little boy. Like, no, <laughs> just focus on you focus on the lord and cute, everything though. else will fall into <laughs> he cute though <laughs> yeah <That's> how... <laughs> man it especially at like your that. age like i remember being 20 something yeah we get distracted by everything mm -hmm. especially at that young age mm -hmm. that's literally why i sit on the front row like because i get distracted real easily <laughs> and i'd be turned around and looked at everybody else like nothing in particular but i will just look at everything yeah. and when you're sitting on the front row you can't be looking all around talking about like oh what's over here what's over there you gotta focus you know yeah it's, it's easier <laughs> it's much easier <laughs> the front row will save your soul i'm telling you because <laughs> i i was um 23 yeah i was married no well we weren't married at the time but we were together at 23 because I met my wife in 90. Yeah, I met my wife at 20. We weren't married yet. But if I asked somebody else this, at that age, I could imagine the challenges of being single and trying to be saved. Mm -hmm. you know, now, at 44, it's a little easier. If you have children, you're distracted. Yeah. But if you're 23 and single and you have a smartphone, you, you might always think you're missing something. Yeah. Is that true? Yes. It is the absolute truth. It's like, oh, I could go talk to so-and-so, but he ain't in church. Or I could go talk to so-and-so and he is in church, but he's he act 13 and he's like 30. Like, wow. it's just, it's like, no. Like, there's actually this guy that I work with that likes me and I'm like, first off, you're like 30 something. I don't want, some, like, I'm, I'm 23. I don't want somebody like way older than me you know what I mean um and I was actually talking to my mentor about it and she said 30 no that was her response 30 no okay. <laughs> and um it's just like it's like I could if I wanted to and there are some days more than others where I'm just like I, I definitely couldn't nobody would know yeah like nobody would know who's who's gonna tell me no I'll have to think about it later when I when we like God calls us up and He's like, hey, but you know, you did this and you did that, and it's it's like that secret sin. It's just everything is everything's just pulling at you. It's like, yeah, I mean, I could do it and I, and I want to do it, but that's the title of your book. Everything's pulling at you. Ooh, that's that's not good. It's a good title. Yeah. A good time. I'm holding that's, on to that. That's pretty good, especially for single women. Yeah. Because, like you said, there's no, it's true. there's nothing holding you. But it's not. Jesus. There's literally yes. I will say the one thing that I and I have I have to stand on it every day, every like moment. Mm -hmm. It's there's nothing better than where I'm at now. You know what I mean? There's nothing in the past for me. There is not a person. There is not a thing. There is not a anything there is absolutely nothing in the past for me if it's not here with me today then it is not needed yeah. it's exes are exes for a reason they're an example of what you don't need and what you don't want example it's like <laughs> it's where you learn the past is where you grow but the future is like where you look unto you know it's man because yeah, i know for a fact my son when my son was born i was 21 and I wasn't saved at all. Should have been, could have been, but you know, facts, whatever. Yeah. I know for a fact, if he wasn't born at 21, I would have been twice the devil I already was. Because I had to grow up. Mm -hmm. And because of my own personal law, I had to be a man. Mm -hmm. This is my son. This is his mom. What am I going to do about it? So me with my own law, you know, being a man and being a fake Muslim 5% of all that, I had to take care of my responsibility. So yeah. I had to grow up. And this is before I went back to church and the Holy Spirit and the Bible and all that. Like, so I know him being born forced me to man up. And I don't want to say God did it because it was he was conceived in sin, but I know for a fact that responsibility held me down. 
So I could just, like I said, when you young, single, trying to be saved, where do you put your energy and focus? And like you just said, what stops you from doing what you want to do? The fact that I don't want to go to hell. That's a good one. Like, yeah, That's it's hot. It's well, whenever my, okay, let's change the focus just a little bit. <laughs> Instead of just the sinful part, yeah. you know, the partying, what would stop you from, you know, traveling the world, going to Paris, going to Germany, going to Africa? You know, what um, what keeps you grounded? Honestly, I, I was thinking about that yeah. yesterday. Yeah. Like, what is just holding me here? Yeah. Um, Stuff like that, yeah. I would love, 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 love to travel. I would say, for one, it's like finances, you know what I'm saying? Like, being Fine. young and... Irris- I'm not gonna say I'm irresponsible with money. That's not it. <laughs> but I know that one day I wanna, like, I wanna have a homestead. You know what I mean? Like, I wanna live in the country and I wanna be like, kind of live on a farm and just grow my own food and stuff like that. Okay. And I wanna save now for that. I also one day wanna have a diner called Grandma's Kitchen. Yeah. So I'm trying to save for that. Okay. And I don't wanna just be like like you know wayward with my money like i don't want to just because there's a million and one things that i could sit here and do with my money like i could kind of like you said i could travel yeah i jokingly told my friend i'm about to get a one-way ticket to fiji and just never come back and just start my own church hey, but it's a nice farmland in fiji right you can grow whatever you want in fiji that's <laughs> don't tell me <laughs> man go, just go i just need a passport honestly yeah. let's go for two weeks and see what happens I really want to go for my birthday. So when I turn 25, yeah. I really want to visit like a um, Caribbean island, mm-hmm. like Tahiti or Fiji or something like that. So that's also why I'm trying to, you know, be a little better with the money and stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah. Um. Also, kind of, I guess, kind of answering your question about like what's keeping me grounded. It's mostly my love for God. Yeah. It's like I've been in a place where it's. I didn't feel it. I've many, many times I've been in places where I didn't feel the love of God from pretty much my entire life. I don't think I've ever really truly felt the love of God until recently, like within this past year, I've never really felt it. And it's just like, God, you love me this much that you would bring me out of, you know, a terrible relationship. You brought me out of, you know, like, crazy college years you brought me out of like i was never like into drugs or nothing like that like you know obviously we all tried a little weed once or twice but it wasn't nothing crazy like you brought me out of self-hate and a low self-esteem and low self-worth like you brought me out of all of that and if you can do that for me what makes you think you what makes me think that you wouldn't do it again or why would i not want to live for you like for me like wearing a skirt or a dress it's nothing it is absolutely nothing compared to the love that god has shown me the mercy that god has shown me mercy it's that word right that is a word and that right there is why i am like nice to people you know what i mean god showed me mercy yeah so i gotta show them mercy i can't slay everybody that upsets me because if that was it wouldn't nobody be here because everybody be irritating me but you know it is what it is <laughs> but it's it's just god it's the love of god that keeps me grounded and i have to stand on it and it's simple it's still small things like waking up every morning and just be like all right thank you lord for waking me up again even if you don't get the full prayer time that you would want maybe yeah just that before you check your phone thank you lord for waking me up again for putting this breath in my lungs <laughs> for letting me see another day because you didn't have to yeah he, he really didn't. No, he didn't. Like, I remember as a kid being taught that God was like a prison warden. He would literally sit high and look low. He could strike you down at any moment. And that's kind of what turned me off from God. It was like... Yeah, me too. It turns a lot of people away. And that is true. He will. And he can. I don't think he will. But there's also a soft side of God. There is the God that, you know, was like, let the little children come to me. There's the God that pulled me out of the miry clay. There's the God that pulled you out. Like, there's the God that would go into the club and save you. You know what I mean? And meet you where you are. Yeah. Man, it's... I one of them testimonies, too. Mm-hmm. 
God, if you really want him, he will come to you. And towards the end of my relationship, that's, and that's kind of how we fell apart because he was, my ex was atheist. And I was, I started going to church around the end of our relationship. And, um, I'd be like, yeah. And then the Bible says, and God said, and he'll be like, I don't want to talk about that. So it was always me just pushing everything that I believe to the side for this boy. And it's like, do I love you more or do I love God more? This boy. And, <laughs> This boy. Go ahead, go In ahead. that moment, it was, you know, I love this boy more than I love God. Um, yeah. And it's, man, when I think back about that, it's just, it's amazing to see, like, how God was working in my life and I didn't know it. Because I know once I was actually going to go in the Navy, I was training to go in the Navy. I was getting ready to go to, um, I want to say MEPS. You know, to do all that stuff before you like Navy. go. That's Annapolis, right? Hmm? Annapolis, Maryland. No, like the Navy, like the um, military branch. Yeah, the <laughs> boot camp is in Annapolis. Yeah, I'm sorry, my mind was. Yeah, okay, I think that's where the new recruits go to Annapolis. Yeah, I was um I was getting ready to go to that. Okay. And um, I had decided not to do that because I wanted to go back to school to get my bachelor's because I wanted to be an officer. Okay. I didn't want to go in without rank. I was like, I don't want to, I didn't want to climb. I yeah. was just like, yeah. I'm going to be up here. I'm going to tell other people what to do. Yeah. And no, God was like, sit it down, try again. Um, I actually ended up dropping out of school. I just, I had like, life was just crazy. Like I didn't have a car. I was having roommate issues. I moved to Virginia Beach. My school was in Norfolk, so I was literally paying for a lift, like $60 every day to go to class. Wow. It was crazy. Um, and yeah. moving there actually is how my relationship with God started to grow. Because I met these... these right after you were humbled. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right after. <laughs> I, um... <laughs> yeah. That's another eight-hour sermon. Yes. <laughs> Man, it would preach. <laughs> yeah, I met, um these people at my old church at my home church yeah. and they would come and pick me up for church because I didn't have a way like literally they just they showed me what love was you know what I'm saying like little things like coming to pick me up for church when I moved to Hampton and moved back home with my mom my pastor's wife she used to come from Portsmouth and pick me up and we used to go to church in Chesapeake I'm like and and I remember that moment. That's when I truly like. That is another moment where I felt the love of God. The like, whole hour, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, it's crazy. Like, Two tunnels. I don't exactly. If that's not love, I don't know what is. And I actually texted her a few weeks ago, and I just I was telling her about that, and I was just like, it is just. I just want to thank you for showing me what love is, showing me the love of God through you, because. I don't think I've ever felt it from anybody else or seen it in any other capacity. When I think back, I have seen it, you know, in other ways, but I just, I was like, this lady really truly loves me. Like she came out of her way to get me. And like, she loves me, you know what I'm saying? She wants me to be here. Yeah. People don't do that. Most people, they'd be like, most people like, hey, you got um, $20 for gas, I'll come get you. Yeah. They don't ask for five no more. They ask for twenty. When, when, you, when you people do stuff for you and you don't give them anything in return, mm -hmm. that's real. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's love. She just wanted my soul saved, and that's kind of what I think about when I think of like when I think of God. I think of just the little things like picking you up for church or hey, can you want to? Can I teach you a Bible study? Little things like that. It's just it's God in the everyday. God in every day, and He's always here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cause it's like mercy. Like <laughs> I remember when I learned what mercy was. Cause mercy is when you bow down to meet someone else's need, mm -hmm. risking contamination to yourself. Mm -hmm. Cause you didn't have to do it. Mm -hmm. But involving yourself with those people, now you're exposing yourself to their mess. But you don't have to do it. Yeah, that's mercy. I was actually talking about that yesterday. Cause if there's no risk, it ain't mercy. Yeah, it's just a favor. Yeah. God goes that extra mile and he don't have to. He definitely don't. And then we backslide again anyway. And he's still coming to get you again. Every time. And because when I look back over my last 40, he was there the whole time. Like mm -hmm. I got stories and stuff I experienced living in Germany. Experiences I had in the back of police cars. Like mm -hmm. God will save you from your mess. 
Yeah. Knowing you're going to do it again. Yeah. That's the funny <laughs> part about it. He knows, like, he know that you're going to do it and still will come and get you. Like, that is love. Literally, God, like, and this, this literally just came to me. Like, God is love. You know what I'm saying? And I never knew how... What's the word? What's a good word? How how deep the love is? Yes. Yes. I just, I never knew how deep his love ran for me. You know what I mean? Or for you or for anybody. Like God is love is so much more than just something you learn when you're five. It is literally like what you build your life upon. It is like, and when you get that revelation that God is love and it's more than just, it's like, oh my gosh. I don't even have a word. It's just, oh my gosh. Like, it's Yo, crazy. It's, I literally posted this video today on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I used a different um, concept, but it's the same thing. God's love, it's a condition. Mm -hmm. It's not just the feeling or an emotion, it's the condition. Mm -hmm. And the analogy I use is, you know, glass cup. We put, you know, we put our lives in the cup, we put our money, our jobs, church, religion, our sports, our friends, we put all this stuff in the cup, but then we add Jesus to the cup. Mm -hmm. I'm a Christian. No, Jesus is the cup. And we're in the cup. Yeah. And Jesus puts the water in the cup, which yeah. is the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So we're in the cup and the water. In the cup, with, he put us there. Yeah. So living in God's hand and the love of God, it's a condition. It's everything. We don't add him to our life. He is the life. Mm-hmm. And whatever he wants, he adds to the cup because he is the cup and he is the water in the Amen. cup because the Holy Spirit is there with you. You're immersed in God. And then you can only communicate to that. We and do. because you're with him, he ain't going to let nothing hurt you. He yeah. ain't going to let nothing contaminate you. Yeah. Because you're in his cup. Yeah. So if something happens to you, it's his fault. Yeah. And somehow he would teach you to say all the time, nobody on Judgment Day can blame God. That's true. That is definitely. So stay there. Yeah. Why would you leave? Yeah. Where are you going? Exactly. What's, what's better? <laughs> Please tell me. <laughs> if Jesus is <laughs> right here, know. where are you going? And he used to say these basic lines. I'm sitting there trying to outsmart him, even though God put him there to teach me. Yeah. But with all my 5% of knowledge, with all my esoteric Hinduism wisdom, all this stuff I was reading, trying to disprove the Bible, I'm sitting there, he's saying the most basic lines, and it's real deep to me, but I'm trying to prove him wrong, but he's right. If Jesus is here, where are you going? Yeah. Anything other than that is wrong. Yeah. Then you wonder why you're tired, sick, stressed out, yeah. going through hell. And even if you're going through it, he's still there, so it's okay. Yeah. But it's getting to that point. And then, you know, I just learned this recently, too. When we sow all these crazy seeds, God has to go back and weave mm -hmm. something else because you made it harder than it should have been. So sometimes it is your fault. We suffer today. I think most of the time it is. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like your credit score. Yeah. You make <laughs> you paying for stuff because you made a bad decision 5, 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. That's great. I like that. But today your credit score is 500 yeah. because of something you did 10 years ago. Yeah. So God ain't mad at you. You just yeah. did something stupid 10 years ago. You knew not to buy that car. Yeah. So we sometimes we pay for stuff today because of 10 years ago. Like when my ankle act funny, it's because I sprained it 20 years ago. God ain't mad at me. I was playing ball 20 years ago. You know what I mean? So that's just a light example, but that's how yeah. our lives be. That's so good. Oh, my God. And that's, that's why I try to yeah. live this life of integrity because I don't want my kids to suffer for me because there's scriptures for that too. Yeah. The Bible also said your kids going to pay because of what you did. So I don't want my kids bleeding because of me. So I, it, even, like I said, even before I was a Christian, I still wanted to be a man. Like, call me a man. That that just, it was, I, I can't, I don't know where that came from. I'm going to pray about it. But something just said, be a man first. You know, I don't know where that came from. It was just a conviction I have. Because, you know, it's easy to lie, cheat, steal, and snake. Mm -hmm. But I learned at an early age, people don't like them. Like, matter of fact, I could tell you, maybe we're running out of time, too, but <laughs> I can say this real quick. I can't remember the movie, but this one image stuck in my head. It was this guy stranded on a desert. At the end of the movie, he was stranded on a deserted island. 
with these huge treasure chests full of gold. But he killed everybody else to get it. So he had nothing else but himself and his yeah. gold on this island. Yeah. All by himself. So I, maybe God showed me that movie for a reason. Because <laughs> what's the point of being a snake if you can't enjoy it? Yeah, that's true. You can't eat the gold. Yeah. And you destroyed the boat because you killed everybody to get there. <laughs> yeah. So, you, you know, and that's how the movie went off. I can't remember the movie, though. I'm going to look it up because I, I definitely <laughs> see somebody, somebody watching this, y'all know what movie that was. <laughs> I'm sure we could Google everything. But it ended with the man with all this gold and money on the deserted island by himself. I don't want to be that guy. That's kind of like um, Lazarus and the Rich Man. Like when the Rich Man was in hell. You know what I'm talking about? Yo, that was so... Yeah. <laughs> what you about to say? I'm sorry. No, I'm just saying that's like that's what it reminds me of. It's like I know for me, if I don't have nothing in this world, I, I just I just rather have Jesus. I don't need anything else. I really really don't. There is nothing better and nothing yeah. greater. Like God can have it all. And I know <laughs> I was telling my friend that the other day. He was like, you know, be careful what you're saying. God gonna snatch everything, and then we'll see. <laughs> and I was like, mm-hmm. and it, it okay? That's cool. Because I still got God, you know what I mean? Like, I still have Jesus. I'll, yeah. I'll figure it out. God will figure it out. <laughs> I ain't going to figure it out. And you know what's so ill about that story? What did he ask? You remember what he asked? The rich man that, that was in heaven? If he could just get, like, one drop of, um, I want to say water, on his tongue. So he was asking for water, right? He was asking to be served. Because mm-hmm. rich men, are, especially in that culture, they used yeah. to be served. yeah. He didn't ask to leave hell. I had never noticed that. So him and his pride yeah. still wanted to That's be treated good. with service. Oh my gosh. He wanted yeah. comfort, but he wanted service and comfort yeah. in hell. Yeah. He never asked to leave hell. Yeah. So even in his pride, he's still demented. Yeah. So he didn't want God. That's he wanted comfort, yeah. service, and to keep his pride. Yeah. He never asked God to take me out of hell. He wanted comfort in hell. That's, I'm about to go read it again. That's good. Jesus told that story for a reason. That is good. So he chose hell instead of God. Yeah. And his pride didn't even let him think yeah. there was something else. Yeah. I'm in hell, but I still want my service and my comfort. But I'll take it in hell. I don't want to be yeah. with God. That's kind of how life is today, though. We like, choose hell. We want our cake and eat it, too. Like yeah. We want to live this life some people like you want to be a Christian but you still want to do everything that you want to do you can't be a Christian and still be out here fornicating you know what I mean like you can't be a Christian and still be out here doing this that and the third it don't work like that we're supposed to be set apart you're not supposed to act like this world like you you transform and that right there is that's actually one of my favorite scriptures like you you just it don't work like that and that's something that I've God definitely had to teach me yeah. Just for a while, like I um, there was this guy I was talking to, and um, <laughs> this was not that was this was a year ago actually. I was like year three in church, and I'm like, oh, I can I can change him, you know what I'm saying? Like if I bring you to church, you know, flirt to convert. Mm-hmm. It don't work like that at all. It's very rare. <laughs> Missionary dating. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> man. Missionary dating. Yeah. Mm-mm-mm. Like. And I wanted to live this life and still be in church every Sunday. And it's it's not necessarily a bad thing. Like, I'm still going to church. That's, that was my mind. I'm still in church. I'm fine. I still sit on the front row. I still go to the altar and pray. And I don't know if you know, but it's hard to pray when all you're thinking about is, like... Stuff. Yes. It's crazy. Like, it's it's just like a block. It's like your prayers literally hit the ceiling. Definitely. I went through, oh, I went through five years man. of that. Yes. Dang. Yeah, that's, yeah. I went through five years of that. That's so sad. That's <laughs> Because we had to talk about it on another show, but that's yeah. the bitterness. Yeah. Because the closer you get, he's pulling out the other stuff. Yeah. Remember he said, if you know you have art against somebody, put your gift down and go fix it. Yes. God's pulling all that bitterness out. Yeah. Because you can't come to him with that trash. Yeah. That's why I like the analogy of the cup. Like, yeah. you can't put radiation and holy water in the same glass. So the closer you get to God, He's purging that trash out. 
and sooner or later you're gonna have to deal with it mm -hmm. or you're just gonna be a fake Christian yeah or permanently lukewarm which yeah. becomes a compromising saint and we all know those people because they listen we, you know what that looks like we ain't gotta do that yeah because you can go to any other church and be comfortable in your sin mm -hmm. but if you want the real Jesus he's gonna get that stuff out of you so I know that block that's yeah. the that block is a blessing because yeah. the conviction means he still loves you yeah yes 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 that is the absolute truth Damn, I can't have a drink <laughs> I can't I feel like because <laughs> I'm in the cup you can't mix the radiation and the holy water yeah that's good oh my god this is good I like this God is good God is good all the yeah. time anything else you want to say Cause we could do this for 77 hours. <laughs> no, for God real. Is big. God is. Is there anything else you want to say? Is there anything you want to say to young women that want to know Jesus? What does Lauren have to say to them? And we're going to end with that. I would say just pursue him. Search for him with your everything, with your whole heart. Like the Bible says, when you seek me, you'll find me. Just keep knocking, keep asking, keep, you know, just keep searching. Um, reach out, message me if you have a question. Like, I would love to teach you a Bible study. I would love to help you on your journey to pursue God. And if it's something that you need help overcoming, we can pray about it together. I got you. I'll be praying for you. I'll pray with you. That's it. God bless you. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>